Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jeanette, also known as Misfit Vegan. And today, I'm going live with the one and only Banana Commander. That's right, y'all. I got Chris Kendall, who's gonna come in and talk about a few things. Number one, I'm gonna ask him about Thanksgiving. Okay, I need some advice. Okay, number two, we're gonna talk about his 21 day meal plan. What's up, Sherry Boo? Um, we're gonna talk about a bunch of things. I have lots of questions for him. And so guys, if you have any questions for Chris, of course, Chris is here, he's amazing. He's A1 since day one. Guys, put the questions in the question box below. That little question mark, put your questions there and we'll get to them for sure. Okay, let me and let's get started, y'all. Hello. Hey, Chris. It always the camera. Day always. One. What's up, Chris? <laughs> Not too much. I love it. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm good. The camera's always like on my boobs, and I'm like, why? Well, that's on purpose. We know. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I'm trying to get those views up, Chris. Okay, yeah. yeah. You're yeah. Right. I am right. too, but it just doesn't work when I do that. <laughs> Okay, listen, before we get into it, Chris, I got a lot of questions for you. So don't waste my, oh, don't waste no time with these, with these oh, jokes. No. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. I'm scared now. <laughs> I'm on the hot seat. I feel like I'm in a game show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the Banana Commander. Did you, did you ever get this, by the way? Oh, my God. Look at that shit. Look at that fruity shit. <laughs> did you I ever mess get around. this? Because Lissa, I don't know if you know about this banana, but me and Lissa bought one each. And she said she was going to send it to you. She never did. She never did. If she did, I don't know where it is. <laughs> I have I have a banana nightlight. Like, well, that's kind of weird. I have a banana nightlight that, like, you, you press and it's kind of like a flashlight. And then also I have banana candlestick holders. Uh, blessed be from uh, um, Rachel. Or, no, it was from Kay who sent them to me. Wow. I think. Uh, you, yeah. you probably have a lot of, I got the watermelon here. You probably got a lot of the banana stuff. I got quite a bit of banana stuff. I yeah. saw that Christmas shirt you have. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I make some banana stuff as well. You know, I got the high fashion Gucci rip off banana kind of print <laughs> stuff. Got them in like shirts and fanny packs or butt bags for the people in the in Europe or UK and uh, you know hats and all that fancy stuff. You know, just you know, Oh yeah. No big oh, deal. Yeah. No big deal. If, if you want to represent in a in a fruity weirdo <laughs> way, if you want to re represent your inner weirdo. You got to go to Chris's website and get some of his stuff. Like, oh, I should have been wearing your shirt. Oh, oh it's all good. You had to you had to start the camera low and that wouldn't have worked right. well. So you got to make shirts like, you know, sports bras. You got to make some slutty stuff, Chris. What's going on? I, I got there? some booby shirts. I got some booby <laughs> shirts. And, and, you know, I was, I was actually looking there. I can make some sports bras. I, I might even make some and uh, leggings as well. You know, I can make a bunch of stuff. I, I do have panties, you know, I figured that was the best way to get into a wide range of girls pants without being really bad. You have panties? You have banana panties? I, I have, yeah, banana panties. They're, they're, they're older. It has um, like a gangster looking banana on it with like a chain and stuff like that. And it says like, uh, ooh, baby, I like it raw. And uh, yeah, I got like a hundred pair made. I probably have like 90 left. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you're still working on getting in uh, all the girls' pants, um, clearly. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I shouldn't advertise because us pretty hoes, we want to represent Chris. So like, I'm checking those out. Okay. okay. Check them out. Hey, I, I, I'll shamelessly uh, add that, you know, everything in my store right now is 40% off with the code ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, is that a joke? Or are you being serious? I can never tell. No, I'm being totally, I'm being totally serious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm getting those panties. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Come on yep, now, absolutely. come on now, yeah. all these fruity hoes watching, Seanette and Sh uh, Sherry, y'all <laughs> y'all fruity hoes need that ho 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 discount. Okay, yeah. so let's focus. <laughs> I haven't even asked you a question yet, damn it. So now guys, we are talking to Chris about multiple things today. First of all, before oh. we get into his 21 day meal plan, I want to talk about Thanksgiving because yep. I'm here in the States. I know y'all Canadians don't care about today, but it's a big day and people are yeah, yeah. um we're thankful we're grateful we, we we have thanksgiving it's just a couple months earlier oh oh really okay okay very good yeah. Yeah. so now what is some advice because you've been doing this for how long you've been a fruity weirdo 
Um, well, I, I got really into fruit eating in 99, but I went all raw, like hardcore in 2004. So like 18 and a bit years. Wow. Wow. Okay. So you've been doing this for almost 20 years now. So what is some advice you can give to people? Cause they're going to dinner tonight and they're mm. going to be tempted and they're going to be with people that are not healthy, not raw, not vegan. What is yeah. some advice you give to people, um, to get uh, to enjoy the holidays as a healthy vegan? I, I usually say, um, you know, take a bunch of uppers or get really drunk before you go so they don't see. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Write I'm totally joking. Yeah, oh, write joking. this down. Okay. No, no, no. Um, actually, the beforehand part is more like making sure you eat something beforehand so you don't have to eat a giant volume when you're there. I mean, I, I love eating a giant volume, but if I'm at a family affair, an event, especially with if it's with, um, you know, family members or cousins or people that I'm not with quite as often, I prefer to have my hands and mouth a little bit more free than normal. So I'll still make something amazing and a large amount that I can bring and share. But I like to have a big bang and smoothie beforehand so that I'm like, I'm pretty much stuffed and I'm, I'm okay if I don't have that much of the dinner and I'm not, you know, just sitting there eating. I mean, if it's with my immediate family, eh, I don't care. You know, I'll, they know what's up. I'll, I'll just make something and have it and do whatever, maybe make something to share. But if it's a little bit bigger, a little bit a uh, different group of people, getting some food in before can help a lot. So you're not thinking about food and you're not spending an hour and a half munching down your salad while everyone else is done playing and talking about you, you know? That's <laughs> such good advice. Because, yeah, we don't eat like everyone else. If you're trying to be a healthy vegan, you're going to eat more. You're going to eat yeah. more volume. It's going to take you longer. So that's such good advice. Yeah. Okay. So um, you, okay, so 18 years. That's amazing. Um, how has your lifestyle evolved over the years? Because now you have this 21 day meal plan for the winter. Yep. And so how has it, wh how did you used to eat when you started and how do you eat now? We're very curious. Yeah, you know, it's funny when I first started, like it, right after meeting Doug Graham, it was before he had put out 80, 10, 10. I, I basically went 100% raw overnight. Before that, I had been basically doing raw till four for about six months, although it wasn't called that. It was just, you know, high raw food. And um, I met Doug and I, it really was impressed upon me the, the value of simplicity. So I really, at that point, I was mostly eating mono meals, uh, very simple combinations. At that point, I didn't see or know about making like vegetable noodles or anything. It was, it was a number of years before actually I even heard about like, you know, making raw noodles. So it was, it was really just a lot of mono meals, really simple smoothies and some simple salads and just eating things out of hand. Um, the first five years as a raw foodist, I was hygienic, so I didn't have any onions or garlic or hot peppers or spices, or I was also, um, really big into food combining. I still am, but I was, uh, so into food combining that if I saw somebody else eat things that weren't combined properly, I'd get a stomach ache too, you know? So I was really like kind of inflexible in my mind about that feeling like it was a rule, you know, like a tablets on the mountain, you know? So that, that was my first five years as a raw foodist. Um, from there, I, you know, started my website because I've, I've done my website now for 12 years. And uh, around that time, I made my first recipe book, which was made up of my first five years of, raw, of being a raw foodist. And then I started slowly kind of branching out into what I considered low fat raw gourmet and starting to incorporate, you know, hot peppers, some ginger, some onions, a couple cloves of garlic, some spices. And over the last 12 years, I've utilize those on and off and during different periods of time went back to simplicity and eating without any of those things just you know simple whole foods and that's kind of where i am now still you know the last 12 years that's really what i've been doing it's like if i want to kind of feast up and serve for a lot of other people i i might make simple hygienic starters and then have a little bit more of a fancy uh you know curry or a pizza or shepherd's pie or whatever the heck it may be um, and then if I'm feeling like I just want to be like extra super peppy, then I just cut it down to super simplicity and basically just eat fruit and greens. And that's really it. Wow. So your diet right now, what is that like? Do you do mono meals for breakfast, lunch, and then a big salad for dinner? Is that usually what you do? I, I usually eat two meals a day. Um, if I'm really active or if two or three of my, well, if, if my meals aren't as calorically dense, like if I'm not going to eat bananas for one of the meal or I'm not going to eat dates or persimmons for one of the meal, then I'll have three meals. You know, it might be like melon for breakfast and then uh, mangoes for lunch and then some orange juice and a big salad or curry for dinner. 
But if I am eating sweet, then I usually have like a giant banana smoothie for lunch, which could be like 18 plus smoothie or bananas. And then have, uh, oftentimes I go right into dinner because I can easily meet my caloric needs with two meals now. But again, if I'm more active, then I'll probably have some fruit before dinner and then have the, the more veggie based or greens based dinner. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, again, we are going to be taking questions at the end. So if you have any questions for Chris, leave them in the question comment yeah. section below. Yeah, do that thing. Do it. That thing. Ask, ask anything. This is, this, is a safe, this is a safe place. Yeah. <laughs> Other, any questions? Any questions? Chris likes the weird questions. So oh, any oh, I love questions. Him. Oh, yeah. I love it. Oh, I, wanted, I just want to say one thing. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm talking on you. Um, <laughs> I was just going to say that, you know, I think it's important to note that the first, you know, like five, six, seven years on a raw food diet, I was eating between three and five meals a day. And most people when they're starting, they need to eat, you know, generally speaking, at least three meals a day in order to get enough calories. And a lot of times four or five meals a day and just progressively over time by eating basically like it's my last meal on earth, every single meal, my meal size slowly went up and the, the time between meals got longer and longer. So I, I, you know, I just wanted to mention that because sometimes people, they just start the diet and they try and force 18 bananas down and they hate it. And then they're like, that banana commander guy's stupid. And, you know, this diet sucks and I'm just going to go eat something else, you know, but, you know, honor your own self and, and take some transition time. Great point, Chris. I'm laughing because like, that's basically what happened to me too. I had yep. to eat a lot more in the beginning. And that's why mm -hmm. I gravitated towards dried fruit because it had yeah. so many more calories and it was n dense. And, you know, now I can't eat dried fruit. I can't. Yeah. It, it makes me dry, <laughs> you yeah. know. And so yeah, that's no but, fun. Yeah, no, no. It makes me thirsty and I don't want to be thirsty. Yes. I want to be no. juicy, sweet and delicious, you know, uh, yes. Yes. all the things. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want props now. Food. I'm like, where's my props? Oh, you don't have accessories. Oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Where's those underwears? Where's those ho 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 underwears? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I'd have to dig them out. <laughs> That's what she said. I don't know. Okay. So <laughs> here's the thing. I wanted to ask you. Well, thank you for bringing up what you do best, which is, you know, guys. There, I don't think there's anybody better, and I'm not just saying this, Chris. There's nobody better uh, on earth that is doing the low fat raw gourmet. Seriously, uh -huh. seriously, you are doing it right. And guys, that's the way you want to eat. You want to eat a lots of fresh, ripe, juicy, delicious, sweet fruit and satisfy your cravings. Yeah. yeah. Cravings. <laughs> okay. Busters. You got that. So you got, I got that. that. Oh got yeah. That. Okay. <laughs> you know, I got a watermelon tattoo on my foot. I should have put Ooh. it here. Yeah. Hey, it's gotta, hard to put your foot uh, here. Uh, it's hard to yeah. put your foot on the camera. Oh, there okay. it is. We don't want to put our foot in our mouth right now. <laughs> no, not right now. No, no. Uh, later, after dinner. Yeah, so then, exactly. Or the low, the low fat raw gourmet. This is important, guys, because you're going to still have cravings. You go raw, yeah. you go healthy, you're still going to want the curries and the burgers and the pizza. And you know, Chris's books, so valuable. Okay, so guys, Chris has a book now. It is called The 21 Day Winter Meal Plan. And this book is in the plant based bundle we were supposed to start with that Chris but you know yeah it's all right it's in there yeah it's too much fun it's too much t fun talking to you so <laughs> guys you can get Chris's new book the winter meal plan for literally 50 cents until Monday yeah. it's part I'm of getting this so bundle. ripped off it... <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm just joking I'm, I'm so happy to be a part I'm so happy to be a part <laughs> me too because it's the biggest bundle I've been a part of I don't know yeah, me you. too. I think it's the biggest. I think it's the big. Oh, well, it's for sure the biggest vegan bundle there's been. So it's it's big. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Crazy. It's crazy deal. Crazy deal. It's two hundred books, guys, for fifty dollars. Click the link in Chris's bio. Check it out. You only have till Monday. Or your bio. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. and mine too. But yeah. you only yeah, have till Monday. Yeah. Yes. Either and one, Monday at midnight on uh, mi Monday midnight EST. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Either Fruity Ho of your choice. Click the link in our bios. And you will get this amazing bundle only till Monday, $50, yeah. 200 books, over 3,000 recipes, including Chris's yeah. brand new book. You're going to get my beauty book as well. So you can be beautiful yeah. and healthy with both of our books. Okay. So now, I, I should what say is... My, my, my book isn't brand new, but I don't have it for sale on my website. And it's only been like offered in another bundle. So, you know, it's... It's kind of pretty new. Most people, it's probably new. I, said, I knew it know, wasn't I, new. I, I'm sorry. I knew it wasn't just, new because I have it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I wanted to, 
you know, okay, here's the thing. You know what, oh, Chris is such an honest, oh, God. nice guy. Let's start again, let's start again, let's start again. No, no, no. My new book you know is what, so guys? great. This is, what, this is why I love Chris, because he's honest, he's a good guy. Me, I'm just like, no, because if I say new, <laughs> then they gonna think it's new, so then they gonna buy it. <laughs> Well, they're going to okay. get it anyway, because it's such a ridiculous deal, you know, and it's, they probably don't have it anyway. Very few people have my book is, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. And your underwear. So okay, and my underwear. Chris's yeah. new old book, Chris's old ass <laughs> book is available now until Monday. And so, Chris, can you tell me what is your go to winter fruit and your go to winter dinners that you love from your meal plan? Yeah. Well, it's got to be a banana smoothie. <laughs> it's kinda, like, I mean, yeah, bananas are just so staple. Otherwise, it could be a persimmon pudding or something like that. I mean, I got a nice one in there like that. Um, I got a bunch of different green smoothies, too. I like those sometimes, too. But banana smoothies are all reliable. Um, for dinner, it's got to be my curry. I have a curry in there. Uh, you know, other than that, I do love my shepherd's pie. I don't make it as often. But every time I make it, I think, why the heck don't I make this more often? And... You know, I have like a persimmon based kind of uh, noodle dish too, which is ridiculous. And I got a couple of darn good ones in there. I think it will knock people's socks off. Can you tell us what's the, can you just give us a little hint on the ingredients for the shepherd's pie? I've never made it before. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I invite you to try it out. Um, you know, it is a cauliflower mash, but there's a couple other kind of ingredients and special things in there to make it a tastier mash rather than just like a, you know, um, and then there's also kind of like a uh, cauliflower, mushroom, walnut, kind of chunky gravy covered kind of uh, filling part, you know, and uh, optional peas in there if you can get some peas. And uh, there's a couple other secret ingredients to make that gravy really nice and kind of gravyish. And you pop in the dehydrator and I've served it to people who honestly thought it was a cooked vegan one. I've never had anyone go, is this actually meat? But I mean, they, they know me, so they didn't think that was going to happen. But like, it, it tastes like a legit cooked vegan uh, shepherd's pie, which is like, it's super filling. Like, I, it makes a whole pan. And if you put the right sized uh, Paraflex kind of like pan that goes into a dehydrator, it just like slides in the dehydrator. And that's a, a great one to serve for like a, a special event because it comes out in a pan. And when you dehydrate it, the top kind of whip looks a little bit kind of like crusted, right? It gets a little brown. So it looks like it's out of the oven. And then they like think that you went to the dark side, but really you just, you know, <laughs> popped it out of the dehydrator. Yes. You think you're eating that devil's food? That devil's yeah, food. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> okay. So um, I got to make that. I got to make that, Chris, because I've never made one recipe of yours that I didn't love. Seriously. Mm. Seriously. I'm serious. That's kind. Okay. Ava's I'll, I'll, try, here. I'll give you up, one that you Ava? might be disappointed in. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll email you one that's disappointing to me. <laughs> oh yeah okay looking forward to that okay ava's here nandi nandi said that uh mm. we're two of their favorite people on instagram thank you so Aww, much bless you, nandi. but who's your favorite um yeah, and yeah. now don't write hello eva hello chris hey, we Julia. got some questions already okay here oh, we go nice. here we go we got a bunch of questions in the question oh, they took us seriously oh, oh god okay here we go so somebody said Oh my God, somebody asked the Starbucks hours. What, what is going on? Hold on. <laughs> Wrong question. <laughs> I think it's open until like 9.30. I have no idea. <laughs> the, only, the only thing okay, I do at Starbucks is go number two. <laughs> Not number one, number two only. Okay, Sh shit on Starbucks. Yes, that's what I like to do too. Okay, so now, Chris, <laughs> they want to know, do you sprout? Do you sprout? You know, it's funny. Um, <clears throat> Before I went raw, I was really into fermenting and sprouting and I did a lot of it. Like I had little teeny sprout baskets. I'd get wicker baskets and do microgreens. And I built little greenhouses with like uh, uh, coat hangers and stuff like that. And I'd put them up all over my windows around and I had a shower filter in my shower. So I just bring them quickly into the shower and rinse them off. And I was doing that all the time. And I was making like fermented oat burgers and all my own stuff like that. Um, and then when I met Doug, <clears throat> I, I just let go of all that. I was just like, I just want the fruits and the greens. And I, I didn't really bother for a long period of time. Um, maybe a decade ago, I occasionally started adding in some lentil sprouts here and there, but more so out of a curiosity than anything else. And I, I, I'm kind of at that same place now where like, I might buy some on an odd occasion when they're on sale. Um, I might make some on occasion. 
Um, but they, they don't seem to me to be like a necessity or something that I have to do, but something that I like to do in some dishes. For example, if I'm making a raw vegan uh, dal curry, well, I'm going to sprout some lentils and then I'm going to freeze them and thaw them so they're really soft, almost like a cooked lentil dal. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm making a chili, I might pick, put lentils or mung beans in there. Um, if I'm somewhere fancy or if someone serves me a bunch of them, I'm going to eat the heck out of them. Uh, I'm, I'm just fairly lazy and I, I prefer just to have the stuff bought for me, you know, so or made for me by by nature instead of me needing to do it, you know, so sometimes not that often, but I think they're amazing. And the people that are really drawn to them, I think is awesome, too. I, I don't have any like negatives about them. I'm just too lazy. I just like to grab the fruit and the greens, you know. Yeah, absolutely agree. You ain't going to find a better chef than nature. Ne not never. Mm. Okay, so mm. nature made mm. the food perfect. And absolutely. yeah, you can sure. Throw in some sprouts if you want. Sure, why not? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, next question. We got a lot of questions. Thank you, Watermelon Online, for being here. Have you, oh, right, yeah. have you made... Yes, I love that name, right? Okay, yeah, here too. we go. Have you made and eaten any special traditional foods of Sweden as a vegan, raw vegan version of it? Hmm. Any Swedish dishes? Is that what she Yeah. Um... I haven't, no, no specific Swedish ones, but together with Camilla, um, we have made some, uh, and also I have had some, I've been a part of uh, three raw vegan festivals here in Sweden years ago, and at one of the festivals, the, the uh, chef at that time made a whole bunch of classic kind of Swedish me meals, basically like, I think they made three different types of mock, like fish in sauce, you know, because it's really classic, is like, little teeny fishes and weird different creamy sauces. I mean, amazing, cool sauces. And uh, I enjoyed them, but I haven't really made too many myself since I've been out here. Okay, great question. I never heard that question before. Okay, next question is, we want to know, what do you do about salt cravings, uh, Chris? What They want to enjoy salads without salt. What do you do for your salt yeah. cravings? Well, you know, I've done a bunch of different things over the years, but probably my favorite is to make like savory kind of stews instead of salads. Um, I often say I don't really actually eat many salads because it's really rare that I make a salad that's just like, you know, chunks of lettuce with a sauce. You know, like more often than not, what I'll do is chunk up some vegetables, say bok choy stems, which are really savory as is really nice quality tomatoes and zucchini in a big bowl. So chunks of those things. And then I'll make a dressing, but I'll pulse in like a whole other couple handfuls of greens and herbs and stuff like that. So that when you pour it over top, it's like a salad that would be this big, condensed down to a stew that is that big. And it's just way more savory. You can get so much more greens in. Um, I, I would also just mention that if someone's kind of new to it, not used to eating huge volumes of greens, it might take a little bit of slowly ramping that up instead of just body bombing themselves and farting all over the place. Um, but, but it's a good way to get more greens in when somebody's newer and they aren't used to eating that quantity of greens, I would recommend probably, you know, slowly building up the size of salad and or stews that they're making, but then also have something like a green juice earlier on the day. I know a lot of people who, for example, um, you know, they'd start their day with a celery juice just to get extra organic sodium in and really get their green fix. And lastly, the other thing that I do sometimes is use barley grass juice powder, which I, I really enjoy myself. It's naturally sodium rich, um, but, you know, plant-based sodium. So it's really good too. And actually one more, one more neat one that just, that is recent. Um, I recently saw on Chef AJ's channel, the owner of a company called Green Salt, and I was intrigued enough to order some myself. So this isn't a paid advertisement. I, I ordered it myself and um, it's pretty tasty. It's basically sea asparagus that is dried and powdered. It's just a, a powdered vegetable, but it literally tastes like salt, but it's with organic sodium. So again, that's way better than the uh, inorganic sodium found in any kind of salt. So any of those ways will really help quench your salt cravings. And the last little thing I'll say, because I like to keep on going and going, is um, if you really take care of the quality of your greens and uh, of your tomatoes and stuff like that, you're going to be having a way easier time quenching your salt cravings because crappy ones that don't taste like anything. Yeah. You're not getting enough. So you're, you're not going to be quenching those cravings. Right. But if you get good ones, man, like, it's like you get a bunch of those and, and you're just laughing, you know?
I used to eat tomatoes for breakfast and just like laugh the whole time. Just like, ha ha ha, tomatoes, ha ha. And it, it, you know, get those salt cravings. It was really good. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty, that pretty weirdo life. I feel you. I feel you, boo. It's hard not to laugh and be happy and be in a great mood when you're eating great food. You know, Ted Carr taught me a long time ago, food equals mood. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, if you're craving salt, ladies and gentlemen, you're not eating enough vegetables. If you're Got craving it. processed food, you're not eating yeah. enough fruit. There you yeah. go. Yeah, you that's go. like the simplest two rules ever. Like, you got those things. And, and the other thing, like Doug one time, Doug Graham, he simplified it to me. He's like, basically, as like, if, if you're hungry, uh, eat fruit. If you want salt, eat vegetables, you know, and just do that as many times throughout the day as it takes to be totally satisfied. And if you do that, you, you're basically golden. But if you end up like craving one of those hard, you didn't eat enough earlier. Maybe look at the caloric density of the fruit, but that's really it, you know? That's it. Simple. It's yep. simple. Yep. Okay. It's not easy. You know, life is very simple. It's not easy sometimes, yeah. but it's simple. Um, when you have to go okay. to the bathroom, just go to the bathroom, you know? In Starbucks. Yeah. yeah. Number two. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, sh- I wanted to say real quick, Sherry, my boo Sherry, if she's still here, she sent me that salt. And it's in my closet, and I never used it because I don't yep. crave salt. But now you got yeah. me wondering: should I use it? Hmm, maybe I'll yeah. try a little bit. It's it's yeah. It's not like a habit forming one that normal salt is. Like I've I've always found. Cause I mean, you know, eighteen years raw. I've had a few a few times where I've used some salt and then put it away, or like I was at a potluck or a restaurant, had some salt and then didn't. And you know, oftentimes you have some salt and it kind of tries to like sneak around that corner and be like, hey, come on, I have to just have a little bit more, you know, like. It's like, get out of here. I don't want you salt. It's like, no, come on. I'm so tasty. You know, it's like, <laughs> but I feel like crap after salt, you know, it just kind of crawls in there, you know? And so um, I, I haven't found that that green salt does that at all. More often I've used it when I'm serving for other people who are used to salt so that they don't ask for the salt after. But at the same time, if I have crappy quality tomatoes or my greens aren't as good and my dish is just like, it's not really banging. Then I want to put a little bit of sprinkle on that. And then I'm like, damn, you know? Damn, I'm going to try it. Thank you, Sherry yeah. Boo. I know you sent it yeah. to my roommate, but um, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Okay, mm-hmm. here we go. Next question is, Chris, um, I wanted to know, oh, I had a question and now it lost. Uh, it got lost. Uh, It'll come back. Okay. So I wanted to know also about your journey. So obviously you take health very, oh, here's the question. Okay, I got it. So Doug Graham. Yes, that's yep. it. I just recently interviewed Doug Graham. He's a big mentor of mine as well. And yeah. I am conflicted because I love Daily Green Boost as well, yeah. but I love yeah. Doug Graham. Yeah. So now, yeah. what do you say? Because you know Doug and lots of people say, you know, if it's dead, it already went dead. If it's on a shelf, yeah. it's, if it's in a bottle, it's not alive. It's not real food. It's not worth yeah. uh, ingesting. Now, how do you, what do you feel about this? Because I also agree. I love the barley grass juice powder. But yeah. what are your thoughts on this? Well, there, there's a couple layers to that. Um, you know, number one, for me, my experience trumps everything else. You know, like uh, the, the things that I really base my lifestyle and my choices on are, you know, the, the best available science, like in the widest, longest run kind of science, um, nature and what she says, you know, um, my personal experience, and then also the experience of others that have been doing this longer than me, right? So I have those four pillars. And if something doesn't match up with all four of those, then I'm, I'm going to call it pretty sus. But if any one of those is a little off, well, I, I might kind of go back to my personal experience. And that's usually the trump card, you know, and with the Daily Green Booster, I, I use a different brand myself. But um, but uh, with the barley grass juice powder in general, you know, I was against all that kind of stuff. I kind of went by the motto, you know, like fresh or nothing, you know, and um, the only exception, I guess, was like cinnamon and some curry powders and stuff like that. But I wasn't treating those as like a supplement, right? But about, it might have been like six years, seven years ago now, I was introduced to barley grass juice powder and given some. And uh, I like, it was actually at Woodstock, amazingly. Uh, I was give, brought a bag and uh, I felt like I was Scarface. Like I just wanted to put my face in it and just like, <laughs> like that. Like I just, I couldn't help it. Like I just was like snorting it. I mean, I was just like taking little dips every night, you know, and but no, but, but really, um, I was hitting it hard. Like I, I wanted to eat spoonfuls of it for about two months straight. I wanted to eat like two or three spoonfuls a day. And then after that, it slowly tapered off and it left me with a different kind of feeling of satiation. And, um, you know, since then I, I take it just whenever I enjoy it. 
But what I think personally, and I can't substantiate it other than I, I do know there are some tests done. Don Bennett has done a lot of rigorous testing with it and stuff like that, um, that it is higher in known trace minerals than probably the standard grocery conventional kind of produce out there. And so what I think is that I was a little bit low in certain trace minerals, basically eating mostly conventional foods for at that point, like 10 years as a raw foodist, I, I mostly ate conventional. Um, and I just topped them off. And once I did, then I wasn't craving it as much, but I still really enjoy it. And that's the way I look at it. And that's the way that I think like, you know, the general run food industry is not really done for nutrition. Like, sure, you can go to farmers markets, you can go to specialty growers, you can go to John Kohler, and they grow specifically for nutrient value. And they like use rock dust and they do really good. Whereas most of the conventional and egg and monocultured kind of uh, grown produce is grown for yield and for shelf stability. And so, I mean, I still think it's great. It's the best choice we have beyond wild crafted, organic, you know, like self farmed food. But because most of my diet is based on those things, I think that a product that is grown specifically and only for nutritional quality, which is, you know, the, the brands I know like Daily Green Boost and I use uh, Terrasol they're grown on ancient seabeds and like the soil is always tested and they like, you know, it's, it's, it's grown, it's grown as a nutritional product. Right. So I think it has a time and place. Now, all of this to be said, um, I think fresh is best. Um, if you can grow incredible quality greens and if you enjoy grass juices, which you do not need whatsoever, but they are really cool because they do, uh, absorb all the trace minerals and they are really, really nutrient dense when you juice them. I wouldn't recommend eating them really. Um, but fresh is best. If you can make your own juice is better than a dried juice powder, but the way that some of them process their, uh, their juices to turn them into powder is really high quality with minimal nutrient loss. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm not really worried about the nuance of if they are as uh, if they're dead or this or that. Um, I can tell the benefits myself and sometimes it's, it's just dang convenient. You know, like a lot of times with the barley grass juice powder, I just put it in a little teeny plastic bottle. And if I'm traveling for a week or two, I bring that. And then I don't care if I find greens or what I get. I just put a dab of that into my uh, smoothie or just take a shot if I want, you know, and it just makes it really convenient and easy. I agree. Yeah, I agree with everything you just said. And somebody asked the four pillars. Let me know if I got this right, Chris science your experience mm -hmm. nature mm -hmm. and people doing it longer than you yeah 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 that was good yep. that was good yeah that's those are my four pillars hey i will say one more shameless thing since we're all about shameless here today um you know my ho 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 discount it is also extended to the barley grass juice powder on my website that i am an affiliate for and i'm going to be straight up and let everyone know here i haven't i haven't really outwardly promoted it because with 40% off, I actually am paying you $1 to try the juice powder because it's lower than my cost, but I didn't want to make it 35% off and have a second, co second code. So I only probably have about like 10 bags or something. So what, I'm going to be paying out 10 bucks, hoping that if you try it, you might like it and buy more at regular price sometime later. But uh, don't be the sneaky one that orders all 10 to yourself right now. That's not cool. That's not cool. Let other people try it too. But, but if you want to try it, it's the raw advantage. Ho, 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 40% off. Ho, it's super ho, cheap. Ho. It's crazy. I did not know. I you didn't did not know. know. Such a fruity ho ho ho, Chris. Now that's, I know. That's me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Shame. Okay, y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna take care advantage of that whole discount. That's for damn. Give sure. it a try. Seriously, it's it's it. I, and I'm I'm not gonna say it much because I am losing money on it. I don't care. But but honestly, you won't be able to find that quality for cheaper because it's below cost. You know, unless you know someone at Terrasol because it's cheaper than I buy it at wholesale price. So yeah, pretty good. Yeah, so somebody asked what we were talking about. We were talking about barley grass juice powder. Um, I yeah. also, I'm an affiliate as well with Daily Green Boost because nice. I, I love Jamie. I love the founder. Yeah, he is I, good. Oh, what a guy. I want to yeah. interview him, but he's like camera shy. So annoying. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because he's such a good guy. He's so knowledgeable. And um, I love his product personally. And I have it, it really traveling. That's it. Like traveling is the best. And yeah. whatever, you know. Well, we can talk about that all day, but yeah, <laughs> it's so good. Now, you should you should get him to wear a balaclava and also like like mod out his voice so he sounds funny. Be like, so Jamie, you're like, hey, I'll just <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, guys, guess what? We have some more questions, and oh, we're almost done. But listen, guys.
guys, put your questions in the question box. I see we have more questions. But before we continue, I want to let you guys know that there's a special until Monday only. So for Thanksgiving weekend, you will get the plant-based bundle, y'all, for $50. Yeah. And it's worth almost 9000 it's yeah. almost 9,000, Sherry. She has Daily Green Boost here for me. Did you get up? Because I'm visiting Sherry next week. Did you get it just for me? Can you please? Sherry's crazy. She's going to boost you up. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, Sherry, I like to do just Daily Green Boost and water in the blender. Oh, yeah. it's so good. It's yeah. so good. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, so, do you ever um, just do Daily Green Boost and, and a little bit of water till it's a paste and then use that to dip, like, tomatoes and stuff like that in? Whoa, it's that's good. some hoey, yeah. that's some hoey stuff, Chris. Whoa. Yeah, so sometimes I do that and I put a little bit of like ginger and a teeny bit of hot pepper in there too. And then I use it as like a naughty kind of dip. It's like, it's pretty naughty, but it's good. That late night hoey stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. I see you, Chris. Um, whoa, that's like mind blowing. I've never thought of that. I've never thought of that. Um, they have questions, but I have my own questions, Chris. This is not fair. Oh, you know we what, are, are going to do one on your YouTube next week too, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, but, but we'll, we'll have, have more endless questions. questions. Too. Huh? They'll have more questions than two. You know, yeah, they, they will. they'll have more questions. They will. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So wait, let me ask some of theirs questions. Okay, here we go. How much water do you drink, Chris? We want to know. We want to know. I don't drink water. I get everything from the prana. No, I, I um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, it it really depends. You know, like when I'm sweating and and outside a lot and it's summer, I might be drinking a couple liters. Um, on average, usually though, I probably drink about two of these a day, average. Um, if I'm making a date smoothie, then I'm adding another liter and a half to the date smoothie, so it's really juicy, you know. But um, but yeah, it just depends. I mean, for me, I, I wake up in the morning, I'm a little bit thirsty, so I drink some water. Um, if I'm a little bit thirsty later in the day, I, I drink some water and usually it ends up being probably close to about a liter to two on the upper side. Um, sometimes actually just before this, if I was a little bit flushed when I first got here, it was because uh, I was taking a hot bath. And sometimes I take baths so hot that I sweat and I need to drink like a liter of water afterwards. Um, but but yeah, I, it, it varies. You know, I mean, I think for most people, if you uh, wait till you're thirsty, you're probably a little bit drinking a little bit too little and uh, if you're peeing and it's yellow and it smells you're drinking too little um it's good to have uh, just a slight tinge of yellow or more clear ish and generally speaking you want to be going to you know number one at least like 10 to 12 times a day on average in a 24-hour period is a good marker yes remember those old durian writer videos every video started every video yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ava wants to know, what kind of water do you drink, um, Banana well, Commander? What kind you know, of water? Uh, I, this one here, this is a, a travel bottle, Purity. It's a really good water filter, but it's really expensive, but it, it is good quality. So I use this when I travel often. Um, but we recently got a distiller, which I'm really loving that. And um, I, at home with, in Canada, I convinced my parents to get a full house filtration system so that the showers even didn't have you know gas fluoride and all that stuff but we on top of that had an ro device which i think re reverse osmosis is amazing as well so to me really like if you have fluoride in your municipality like which you can just check see if you have fluoride then i would look for either a distiller or a good quality ro device if there is no fluoride then a carbon-based filter is pretty decent, um, but still not going to be as good as either distilled or as reverse osmosis. And if you have uh, access to, you know, great spring water, then spring water is great too, you know? So, yeah. That would be the dream. That would be ideal. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, so we have more questions, but I want to ask one. Um, my question is, Chris, you obviously take your health very seriously. You're very serious about helping other people. It's your life purpose, so clearly. Clearly. I'm, I'm, I'm a serious guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, you have so much fun with the lifestyle and you found joy yeah. in the journey to being healthy and fit yeah. and happy and vibrant and living, you know, like life the way you're supposed to be living, not suffering from disease yeah. and all these things. So now my question to you is, Chris, what is some advice you can give to people to find to join the journey to enjoy being healthy to enjoy this journey that we're on? to help well it, 
it's kind of funny that you you started off with how serious I am. My my uh, advice generally is to not be too serious. You know, it's just to, <laughs> like know what you're doing and have a clear idea of what you what it's going to take to get you where you want to go. But just have fun and take it easy and you know be authentic and you know honor yourself and know that it's a dance. You know, and that nothing is a straight line. You know, so I, I really focus on passion and enjoyment and uh, you know if. If I feel like moving, I move and I, I groove and I have a lot of fun. And if I don't, then I sleep in as late as I possibly can. And I don't guilt myself. I think guilt is a, a wasted emotion. You know, I think useless. that- It's useless. It's useless. Like, well, I, I wouldn't go that far. I think, I think it has a good uh, place in terms of it being like a signpost. But mm -hmm. if you grab that signpost, pick it up and put it on your backpack or tattoo it on yourself, then you're going a little bit too far. Um, it's just saying like, hey, like something's going on here that isn't completely in alignment with your your highest self, you know, or your goals. So what can you tweak, you know, and then, okay, cool. Thanks, sign, you know, like, let's leave that and go forward, you know, so. Um, and I, I really just, yeah, like I, I eat my favorite foods. Um, I don't eat for nutrition, you know, like I, I, I know nutrition up and down. I've been studying it for 20 some years, 23 years now. Um, but I don't eat for nutrition anymore. And I don't, fear that I'm not getting enough. I just, I eat the foods I genuinely love as much as I possibly can at every single meal. Um, I don't worry about, uh, you know, I, I don't really worry about much. I guess that's it. You know, I just don't worry about much. I just, I just go by, you know, like eat when I'm hungry, sleep when I'm tired, exercise when I want to, um, and try and be a service as much as I can, but also be okay with putting up boundaries when I don't have extra to give, you know, which I think everyone has those cycles, you know, so. There you go, guys. That's the secret. That's the se That's Chris's secret. Uh, Chris, how old are you, by the way? Uh, seventy-five. Okay, that's the secret, y'all. No, no. I'm that's forty-two. I'm excited. I'm ex I, You know, I'm so excited to get older because, like, you know, doing this as long as I have, a lot of times I think people are just like, "Oh, he's some young punk. Like, he don't know nothing." And like, you know, now I'm in my forties. A lot of times people are like, "Oh, you're forty? Like, oh wow, okay." You know, like, and when I'm fifty, like hopefully I won't be decrepit and finally the deterioration won't have caught up to me, you know, but by then I'll be like, like, yeah, what's up? You know, and they'll be like, Whoa, it actually works. Okay. I'll wait another 20 years, you know, but I cannot we'll see. wait to be 50, Chris. I, yeah. cannot, the time cannot come fast enough because like the older you are, the, the better we gonna look. And yeah. also, and also people are going to be like, what you're 50. You've been raw vegan for 20 years. Not yeah. possible, but yet it is. Nope. Yeah. Oh, next year, you're gonna, it's gonna catch up to you. I still get people saying that. It's so amazing. Like, oh, just wait, you know, like, you're 20, 25. <laughs> then, then it's year 26, then it's year 27. Yeah, you're okay. still, you're, you're surviving off of that meat you ate when you're 13. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Swami, my friend Swami, who I love so much. Thank you for being Sup, here, Swami. Swami. Somebody debated with him that eating a banana is better than drinking it in a smoothie. What's your yeah. take? Uh, my take is if you really worry about that, you're probably doing yourself more of a disservice than, than eating a smoothie. You know, like, yeah, sure. Um, just eating it as is whole is basically the best you can do, you know. But a smoothie is so freaking ridiculously good for you, too. Like, if you're worrying about it, that worry is causing more nutritional issues than drinking a smoothie, you know, so I wouldn't worry about it. Do what you enjoy and do what allows you to maintain the lifestyle and actually really enjoy it and thrive. And, and don't worry about those little teeny things, you know, it's not, it's not worth worrying about. And people that are like, uppity about it, like they got something going on, you know, they're, they're, they're fighting themselves and have some rule book they're following and judging, you know, like, let people judge, you know, let haters hate. That person that was debating you, Swami, they ain't healthier than you. Let me tell you right. They ain't Robbie. No, I'll yeah. tell you right now. <laughs> what those haters hate. They ain't. They, Chris, they ain't. They ain't. No. All these people that no. nitpick the little things, long term, they can't keep up with that. So, like, what do they no, go? They no. go back to McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, you usually, and I mean, there there are exceptions, you know, and, and this is something that I've I've noticed myself is generally the people that are the most strict and strict, not in the sense that they're doing what they really enjoy. Like I've, I've, like I said, I've done five years where I ate just simple, mostly mono meals and whole foods and no spices. And I enjoyed the heck out of it. You can tell when some people are strict because they're going by a rule book and some sense of like, I'm better if I do this, you know, generally they're, they're stiffer. They're more like tense and like dark circles and twitchy and, 
you know, and I've even been there in that in some parts where if someone was doing something that I thought was wrong, it would like, I'd feel stiffness in me. And I wanted to become aware of that. Like, what's going on there? Like, what am I not accepting in myself? How, what can I let go? So I'm not feeling that when I see other people eating things I don't think are right, you know, and um, I just think a little bit more relaxation and genuinely experiencing what you want to experience and grow through it leads to feeling better and more longevity in this lifestyle. There you go, guys. That was it. Secret to life. We're sharing secrets to life. The least y'all could do is click the link in Chris's bio and check out the perfect <laughs> bundle. That's the check least. that shit, you know? Mic drop. <laughs> okay, guys. You only have four days left, by the way. We have mm -hmm. Chris's old-ass book, The yeah, Winter yeah. Meal Plan. It's so crusty. We got my old-ass, where is it? Oh, my old-ass beauty book. Old-ass. Oh, I printed it out, 240 pages, 240 pages. Nice, nice. You're going to get everything you need to know to not only survive in the winter from Chris, but thrive. He's got a 21-day yeah. winter meal plan. I've got my beauty book, so you're going to be beautiful. You're going to be healthy. You're going to be thriving. And it's only $50 until Monday. And after Monday, it's $9,000. Yeah, you don't want to pay the $9,000. I've had if some people actually say, hey, I just want to get your book. Can I buy it separate? And I'm like, I'm like, I actually feel bad to, to sell it to you separate for like 20 bucks because you can get that in like everything. And I know you're going to find at least five, 10, 15 things that you freaking love, you know, so. There's books by Chef AJ, Raw Food Romance, Ted Carr, Raw Natty Nate, um, um, oh, Plentiful Kiki, so, Raw, Ron Radiant. And by the way, my book is 30, Chris's is 20. That's 50 right there. Yeah. You're going to get 198 other books, boo. Don't miss this yeah. opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just silly. Yeah. And you know, actually more than that, there's a, there's, there's 215 total. And I counted 45 raw focused books. Oh my God. No way. 45 yeah. raw and 215. I've been lying yeah. to people. Oh, With, within that, okay. within that 45, some are high raw, but you know, like a, an abundance of raw food. So raw based, but there's over 35. I think they're just all hundred percent raw. Oh, thank you for doing that work for me with your <laughs> ho, ho, ho uh, discounts and uh, everything you're doing. You yeah. took some time out of your ho-ho-ho stuff to count them. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Let's see. I, I think I have something cool here. Oh, if no, it's not I the whole underwear, long. I don't want to. Huh? Sorry, nothing. <laughs> okay, guys, we, uh, we have a few more questions. Okay, here we go. Um, which are your best advice for men who want to gain weight on a raw vegan diet? Thank you so much, Georgiana, for asking that question. What are you, what's your best advice, Chris, who, for men who want to gain weight on a raw vegan diet? Well, ah, uh, thanks, Swami. Um, first off, recognize that for most people, when they start this lifestyle, it's going to take at least six to eight months for most people. If you have a bit of weight to lose, to bottom out and get to a point where you're like, damn, I'm pretty skinny before you're going to be able to have an easy time building up from there. You know, I, there are some exceptions to that, you know, but in general, what I see is that um, it's almost like uh, buying a new apartment, you know, it's, or buying, it's like buying a place and renovating it, you know, like you want to tear down before you build up. And most people, one, have a hard time eating enough calories and two, may not even have efficient enough digestion to be able to absorb enough um, to really build from the very, very beginning. So, you know, slowly, you'll get to that place. Um, and then from there, it's just all about eating enough calories to be in a slight surplus and be working out hard. Like, you're, you don't make muscle in the kitchen. Um, you know, you if you, you could be eating like the most protein rich foods, but if you ain't doing the work, you're not going to be getting bigger, right? So yeah, you got to put on that, uh, that uh, weight on the scales and then push it or do the body weight exercises. But if you're looking for mass, then you want to be basically lifting weights, you know, and I mean, for myself, I normally sit at a very comfortable 180 to 185 pounds. Um, but I've been as low as 155 after a fast. And I've been as, as heavy as 198 with very low body fat. And I, I find you can easily put on muscle as long as you just, you know, work out hard, progressive overload, um, and give yourself enough recovery, which also includes enough sleep, and you're eating your freaking face off. Like, as a raw foodist, to gain muscle, you got to eat your face off at every meal. There you go. But don't eat anything with a face. No, um, yeah, you don't eat okay. anyone else's face off, just your face off. And it can still be <laughs> low-fat, raw vegan, 
Um, you don't have to like go hardcore on the protein or anything like that. If, if you want, sure, add a little bit more. If you want, sure, add a little more fat, but you don't have to. Um, but yeah, just uh, just smash it, you know, in all ways, just smash it. Great advice, simple, perfect advice. Guys, you follow that advice, all your, all your dreams gonna come true. All, all your, your dreams can dreams. come true. And okay. do the big ones. That's the one last thing I'll add to that yes, is please. like, you know, if you want to add total mass, you want to be doing big compound movements. So like mm -hmm. the squat, the deadlift, the pull up um, and uh, bench press. And uh, what's the last one? Um, bench over row. Those are the big five <clears throat> that utilize the most muscle groups. And, you know, especially the squat and the deadlift, they incorporate so many different muscle groups that it increases your H, uh, your, uh, your human growth hormone. So HGH. And that will actually allow you to build faster. So once or twice a week, at least hit those big, like don't skip leg day, hit the leg day. And then, you know, once or twice a week, do the upper body kind of stuff and smash it hard. And uh, yeah, that's how you grow the fastest. The squat, deadlift, pull up, bent over row. And what was the fifth one? Squat, deadlift, pull up, bent over row and bench press. Bench press. Yeah, don't skip leg day, guys, because there's nothing worse than a guy with a big chest and tiny little legs. Yeah, don't little do stick it. legs. Yeah. And if you can't do pull ups, you can instead just do uh, overhead presses, you know? Overhead but, press. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Thank you. That's awesome. And because uh, I'm, you know, I'm on my journey, Chris, to getting fit. I'm going to be the mm -hmm. fittest, most beautiful raw vegan on the internet. You got this. You got this. Do this. I got this. I'm going to eat my face off oh. and I'm going to do those bent over rows and I'm going to make do it that. happen. I'm going to make yes. it happen. Last question, guys, because this oh, hour gosh. has gone oh. so fast. Chris, thank you so much for being That's here. Fun. I like it. I love it. Fun. I love it. And they got a lot of questions for you. But guess what, guys? We are going to head out soon. And here's the thing. All your questions, I promise you, every single answer is in this bundle. I'm not joking. Yeah. This plant-based yeah. bundle is like getting a master's degree in being a healthy vegan. Seriously, 215 books for $50 and 35 of them are purely raw based. Okay, so you can you have all the books, then you have all the healthy cooked food books for your friends mm -hmm. and family to enjoy. You got the fitness books, they got yoga yeah. training, Ted Carr has an entrepreneurship based um, course in there. There's mm -hmm. so much in here. Chef AJ has a healthy dessert book. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, amazing program and, and uh, bundle. And Chris has, of course, his 21 um, day winter meal plan, which you are going to want to get because it is the way to thrive this winter. You got to make delicious, yeah. healthy food. Yeah. Heck, I don't yeah. Think... Heck yeah. Yes. Are so you sitting cross-legged? I'm so jelly. What Your happened? background is so, so badass too. Jeez, oh, you, got, you got the setup. Yeah, you, you got it going on. Chris, I'm going to live in a watermelon house one day. Did you know that? Nice. Yes, I That's am. That's awesome. Yes, I am, boo. I want to visit that juicy house. I'll, I'll invite you over. And we're going to have, we're going to do a live from this house. It's going to be amazing. And um, I'm slowly turning all my rooms in my house to a watermelon house, you know? So that's how it works. <laughs> that's so cool. I love thank, it. Thank you so much. Okay. So somebody said we're very beautiful, but oh my God. It's Look new. at the kitty, boo. Isn't she good? Oh my gosh. It's What's her name? New. Snooter. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Snooter. If that doesn't sell the bundle, then I don't know what will. I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this has been awesome. There are a lot of questions. Somebody wanted to know if they can... Oh, there's so many guys. I'm sorry. Oh, I, heard, oh, I, I saw someone write, you know, I'll, I'll take one that I just saw that was like, yes. you know, some people maybe wouldn't touch, but someone was asking about herpes. Um, and <laughs> I wouldn't touch... I'm not touching your herpes, Chris. Not again. Yeah. Nope. I don't have herpes. Um, and I, I was I was almost going to make a joke, but I'm not going to make jokes about herpes. Um, but I do know, for example, like, a, you know, like cold sores, herpes, you know, I'll, I'll start there is um, a good way to actually quell those. As soon as you feel a teeny start of a tingle, uh, you use uh, tea tree oil and that'll stop it right in its tracks. So that's that's the herpes tip. I saw and otherwise. Question. I saw that most, most herpes, they, they, they spring up. It's like one of those things that springs up when you're in periods of low immunity and stress. So, you know, take extra loving care of yourself and uh, prevent it. Cause you know, people can have that and not exhibit it ever if they're keeping themselves, you know, like really, really well rested and stress-free and really nourished with a, you know, whole foods, uh, raw food diet that can help a lot. 
Yes, great advice. Thank you, Chris, for that. And then last question we're going to ask, okay? So <laughs> Seva wants to know, what's your recommendation on teeth issues as a fruitarian, cavities, enamel, erosion, and pain? Have you dealt with this, Chris? And what is your advice? Well, firstly, um, I don't consider myself a fruitarian, and I don't recommend a fruitarian diet. Um, you know, I, I I'm a, a little bit nuanced in that, in this point that I, I think that uh, sometimes people will hear fruitarian and automatically assume like, okay, well, no greens, just fruit, only fruit, and maybe no nuts and seeds and stuff like that. And I, I don't really see that as a optimal long-term lifestyle. Um, Short-term, you know, yeah, great. Uh, but in the long-term, I really recommend incorporating lots of greens and vegetables and, you know, nuts and seeds if you enjoy them and stuff like that, and a, a wider variety of uh, whole plant foods. But um, in terms of teeth health, the best thing is prevention. You know, if you already have tooth issues, then that's a little bit of a different scenario. But uh, the, the most ideal things, it kind of goes a little bit deep. We, where do we want to start? Um, one thing that I'd say is I think personally in the first few weeks, months, and even year or two of a raw food diet, it's incredibly important to make sure that you are getting in mineral dense greens and or green juices and or green powders, because in those first few weeks and months, we're letting go of a lot of old. And as our body processes that old and frees up the acidity stored in our adipose tissue and, you know, in our, in our membranes, it, it's letting that go and our body requires alkalinity to, uh, to buffer that acid out. So in those first few weeks, months, and years, you're going to actually be challenging your reserves more than if you were doing this lifestyle for years and years and years and adequately nourishing yourself for years. And because of what we talked about earlier, when people are new to the diet, they may not be able to absorb as well as they would years down the line. So they haven't built up their microbiome and they haven't built up their digestive strength. So in those first few weeks, months, and years, that's when I find that green juices again. I actually don't really do green juices. If someone makes them for me, I will, but I'm too lazy. But in those first few weeks, months, and even year or two, I think green juices and green powders and eating as much greens as you can comfortably digest is really important for tooth health because um, our body is going to be putting towards, putting those nutrients and minerals towards the most important things. And teeth, unfortunately, aren't the most in the bigger picture. You know, so in the first few years, some people have issues. And I think that's one part of it. Um, the other part is just having really good oral hygiene. You know, like I, I like a radius toothbrush, which is like a big uh, cat butt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> snooter. <laughs> um, it's not that kind of show, Snooter. It's not no, that kind Snooter, of show. come on. It's a um, family show. <laughs> it's a family show, Snoot. Come on. <laughs> but I like a radius toothbrush. They're really big, almost like a denture toothbrush and, you know, brushing every night. Uh, Although apparently tooth powders and tooth soaps and toothpaste, they don't actually do as much as most people think. It's only like a, a 10 or 15% difference between brushing with water, maybe even less. Um, it can be useful to have a good quality one. And I like ones that don't have glycerin and don't have fluoride. I like to use um, uh, uh, magic mud and also eco dent tooth powder. And I usually go back and forth with those. I use a water pick to get debris between my teeth and floss when I'm not lazy, I usually water pick every day, but I floss a couple times a week. If you're uh, smarter than me, you'll probably floss every day. Uh, there are um, other really kind of cool things like, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, it's that, um, do, 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 do. It's from tree sap and it actually uh, kills the bacteria that is responsible for cavities it is called, do you know the name of this, what I'm talking about? No, but did you see the timer countdown that just appeared on the top of the screen? Or do you not see that? No, I don't see that. So Instagram just is telling me we have one minute and 24 seconds left. 23, 22, 21. Okay. Okay. Apparently so do those... we can only do an hour live. I didn't know that. I, yeah, I've done over an hour recently, but maybe they're just installing that. Um, but we won't talk about that. Not neem, but neem is pretty cool. Xylitol, that's what it is. Thank you, Watermelon Live. Xylitol. So xylitol can be really helpful for that. Um, if you already do have cavities, you know, doing the brushing, doing the best you can, you know, um, H2O2 rinses and stuff like that. And otherwise the dentist, unfortunately, but, um, 57, you know, chewing 55. lots of greens, not chewing, not chewing dried fruit, uh, you know, eating greens after fruit um, and not brushing with an abrasive tooth powder after eating citrus and eating ripe citrus. I have a whole yes, video called the ultimate oral hygiene plan too. 
Yes, amazing. And inside my book, I have a whole chapter on dental health. If you oh, get the book, it's in the plant-based bundle. Fifty dollars until Monday, guys. You got to do this. It's amazing. It's two hundred and fifteen books for only fifty dollars. It's worth nine thousand dollars. Thank you so much, Chris, for everything. You're amazing. The countdown is going. We got twenty-eight seconds left, guys. Click the link. Thank you so much. Chris's Click the link in Chris's bio or my bio. You're going to get this amazing deal until Monday. If you're on YouTube, click the link below. I love you guys. I thank you so much. And remember, if you want to stay cute, you got to eat some fruit. Eat I some love fruit. you, Chris. I thank you get for it everything. Get in there. 12, love you too. 11. It's like New Year's. 10, like New Year's. 9, Five, four, Okay, I love three, you. I'm going to get off before two. we lose this live. Okay, love you. See you guys. <laughs> much love.